This is a GCSE and IGCSE video about condensation polymerization. We're going to start with a summary and then I'll show you some examples before looking at some past paper questions. So in condensation polymerization, first of all you need a dicarboxylic acid and I'll tell you what one of those is shortly. You also need a diol and that's going to produce a polyester and water as a byproduct. And this links nicely with me explaining what a condensation reaction is. It's a reaction where a small molecule is lost, e.g. water. Now if we look more closely at this summary equation, where have we seen a carboxylic acid and alcohol and water being made before? Well, it was when we were looking at making esters. So just to recap esters, remember in order to produce an ester we needed a carboxylic acid we needed an alcohol. It was a reversible reaction which produced an ester and water as a byproduct. Let's look at an example. So let's take methanoic acid as our carboxylic acid example. We'll take ethanol as our alcohol example. It's going to produce the ester ethyl methanoate because remember the first part of the ester's name comes from the alcohol, the second part of the ester's name comes from the carboxylic acid and the anoate is just the ending of an ester and we're going to produce water. In terms of drawing these, firstly the meth tells us that we have one carbon atom. It's a carboxylic acid which means we need this functional group. In terms of the ethanol, the eth tells us that we have two carbons. We know that the alcohol's functional group is OH. Complete the rest of the molecule. In terms of forming the ester, we need to lose a water molecule, which we'll lose from here. So that means you want to stick the remaining portions of those molecules together to produce that ester. And then water is our byproduct. Now, because we're doing this video about condensation polymerization, we're making a polyester. So it's very similar to what I've done down here. The only difference is that poly means that it's many esters. So how are we going to produce many esters opposed to just one? Well, that's through having a diol. Di means two. So effectively, you're going to have two OH groups. And we're also going to have that carboxylic acid. But guess what? It's a dicarboxylic acid, which means that you'll have two of that carboxylic acid functional group. So I'm just showing you, first of all, how we're actually going to set this up. And the easiest thing to do is look at an example. And the example we're going to look at is the reaction between ethane diuric acid and ethane diol. So let's start by drawing ethane diuric acid. Eth tells us that we have two carbon atoms. We know it's a carboxylic acid, so we need two of those COOH functional groups. So there's ethane diuric acid. Now let's draw ethane diol. Again, we have two carbons. We know that we need two OH functional groups. And then just complete the molecule, remembering that each carbon atom forms four bonds, each hydrogen forms one bond, each oxygen forms two bonds. So there are our reactants. We know we need to lose a water molecule, so we're going to lose that here and here. And then it's just a matter of sticking the remaining two parts of our molecule together. Because it's a repeat unit, we're going to use big square brackets to demonstrate that. And you have to imagine that you're also going to lose this OH group here because that's showing the continuation of the molecule, as well as this H over here. So it's very similar to when we were doing addition polymerization. So draw the rest of the molecule. Make sure you're really accurate with how you're drawing it. And then draw that square bracket again. Elongate those bonds, just like addition polymerization and add an N here and here to show that you've got many subunits. We're going to produce water molecules and we're actually going to produce two N number of water molecules. Whereas before we were looking at a very specific example between ethane diuric acid and ethane diol, I'm going to show you how we can actually do a summary equation that works for all polyesters. Now if we look more closely, we know we always need the functional groups that we see here. However, 
the number of carbons in the middle of the molecule can vary and that's where the block diagram comes in because we use a block to represent any number of these central carbon atoms. So here's a block diagram representing our dicarboxylic acid. Here's our block diagram representing our diol. And in this example, I'm actually going to show you four subunits. So, so two dicarboxylic acids and two diols. Now in terms of losing the water molecules, these atoms need to be lost. So let's draw the product. And so here's our polyester. We know we've lost three water molecules because you can count them here. One, two, three. If they ask you for the ester bond, remember that's the COO that you see. So that's the functional group of an ester. And notice these dotted lines here just represent the fact that the molecule will continue. But remember, this square bracket set up here is a lot neater way of showing what's going on because you can still see the ester functional group here, but you don't have to draw multiple molecules out. The last random thing I want to point out is that some polyesters known as biopolyesters are biodegradable. And what does that mean? It means that they can be broken down using microorganisms. The reason I mention that is because addition polymers are non-biodegradable, so they can't be broken down using microorganisms. And why is that? Because they are unreactive or inert. Let's look at some past paper practice now. Polyesters are condensation polymers. The structures of two monomers that are used to make polyester are, let's just count how many carbon atoms we have here. One, two, three, four. Monkeys eat peanut butter, means one carbon, two carbon, three carbon, four. So I know butter, butane, it's a carboxylic acid, so it's butane, dioic acid. What about the diol? We have one, two carbon atoms, so we know it's monkeys eat, so it's ethane diol. Draw the structure of the repeat unit of the polyester formed from these two monomers. So we're going to lose the OH from the carboxylic acid, the H from the alcohol. We need to join them together. We need to lose the OH here and the H here to show the further water molecule being lost. So you can see how I'm actually getting at my answer. I'm going to draw it here. So keeping everything the same, I know I need to lose that water molecule, so I'm joining the dicarboxylic acid directly to that diol. Remember, we elongate those bonds and add square brackets. So I've just moved my answer into the space. I've shown the repeat units. I know that it's nice and accurate. Identify the small molecule formed when these two monomers form the polyester. I keep mentioning this is water. Grapes also contain esters. The formula of an ester is shown. Deduce the name of the carboxylic acid and the alcohol that can react together to make this ester. So I know that this part of the molecule has come from the carboxylic acid. We have three carbon atoms. Monkeys eat peanut. So I know it's propanoic acid. In terms of the alcohol, we have four carbon atoms. Monkeys eat peanut butter, so it's butanol. But notice where that OH functional group is, it's on the first carbon, so it's actually butan 1 ol And looking at the mark scheme, you would have got away with just butanol, so don't worry too much about that.